Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about all things horses. Now let me give you a little bit of a history lesson. In Farm Sim 19, horses were introduced as an animal that we could care for. And this was pre-seasonal cycles. And you could buy a horse for $5,000. And if you cared for it, rode it, and kept it healthy for 10 game days... Well, then you could sell it for $50,000, a nice $45,000 profit per horse. They were quite the moneymaker and rather lucrative to keep. Farm Sim 22 comes around with seasonal cycles and, well, these guys got nerfed and they got nerfed big time. I don't think horses were profitable in 22. I don't even know why you would keep them other than just being a horse person and liking horses in general because, yeah. They were not worth the money. They were not worth the time investment. And TLDR, I feel that's the same case in 25. I don't feel they're really going to be worth the effort. But we're still going to run through the exercise of talking about horses because, well, oddly enough, there are horse people that just love horses and are very much aware that horses, in reality, are a giant money sink. And, well, I think giants maybe kind of emulated that in real life here in Farming Simulator 25. So, let's go ahead and talk about where do you get your horses. Just like most animals, other than chickens, it all starts down here at the animal dealer because this is where we can pick up our horses. You can talk to Kate and learn all about how to care for animals, but we're pretty much good to go here. So, we're going to run over here to our trigger and we're going to talk about what do we need in order to transport our horses well if you've seen any of the other animal videos for farming Simulator 25 you know that well we're looking at something completely different than what we would typically use to transport animals in fact that is over here under this kind of run down gas station we're going to need a different trailer for horses because well as horse people know you just got to be completely different so you're going to need one of these kingston horse trailers and you're going to need a pickup truck uh, specifically either the international pickup truck or the lizard 2017 branded pickup truck because you're going to need a fifth wheel hitch and the fifth wheel hitch is going to magically appear basically when you come back here to connect to a trailer so let me just demonstrate that for you so we've got our standard pickup truck and we're going to hit x to unfold the tailgate we're going to back up to our trailer. We're going to get the prompt to connect. Magically, a fifth wheel hitch is going to spawn there. We're going to go back to our pickup truck and shut our tailgate. And there we go. Now we can also come back here in the back and unfold our horse trailer if we wanted to. As you can imagine, this horse trailer will hold a total of two horses. And we can activate our trigger and we can load... Onto that horse trigger, well, we have gray, pinto, palomino, chestnut, bay, black, seal brown, or dun. And they're all going to cost $500. And you see there is no transport cost to buy these horses from the animal dealer and put them in your own trailer. And then once you do that, obviously we can come back here fold everything up and we can drive these back to our farm when time comes when we want to sell these horses well we're going to repeat the process by loading them up to our trailer bringing them down here to the animal dealer and selling them now right out the gate these are newborn horses if you will and they're only going to have a real value of 120 dollars so they lose a lot of value pretty darn quick and we're going to click on this button here to unload. We're going to say we want to unload two horses. Well, we have to sell each one individually. And there we go. Now let's talk about where do we get this stuff. Let's go to the shop. We're going to go to vehicles and, of course, animal transport. And here we have the Belvedere trailer. $22,000. We're going to be able to transport two horses and two horses alone. That's the only thing we can use this particular trailer for. We do have a little bit of customization option here on the 
rim color. And that is just about it. On top of that, you're going to need to have a pickup truck. You're going to find that here under drivables. And then under cars and bikes, we have the international pickup truck. $25,000. There is no configuration option for the fifth wheel. It will just magically appear. Or the Lizard 2017 pickup truck. Either of these will work. I did try it with the uh, larger international flatbed and it did not work. So you can't get a fifth wheel for the international flatbed. I would assume you're not going to be able to get a fifth wheel for the Lizard Dragon or any of these other trucks for that matter. Back here at the farm, you could also buy your horses directly from the animal pen. To do that, you're going to come up to the Paul Trigger. And from here, they're going to be $500 again, but there is a transport fee of $300 per horse. So it is definitely more cost effective to buy your trailer or lease your trailer and transport your horses because, well, $300 is going to eat in pretty good into the potential profit that you might have with these guys. Now let's take a look at these horses and some of their stats. So as I mentioned, we're going to be buying these horses as newborns. They are zero months of old age. When we purchase them, there is no option of being able to purchase older horses. They're going to reach puberty after 22 months. And then at 22 months, they are going to start their reproductive cycle, at which it's going to take another 11 months. So 33 months is going to pass from the time you buy the horses until the horse will reproduce. And of course, horses are going to reproduce in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, let me take a look here at our animal pasture because we need to talk a little bit about what do we need to do to care for our horses. Well, as far as food requirements go, they're going to require a base food, which is going to either be oat or sorghum grain. It's going to account for 57% of their overall food sources. Hay is going to be 38%, and then they're going to be root crops. Now, root crops, it doesn't really go on to explain what these root crops are, but I can tell you through testing, it's going to be carrots, parsnips, and red beets. So basically the three root crops that were a part of the FS22 premium expansion. Potatoes and sugar beets are not going to be accepted here for our horses. Now, I do believe that there is some sort of bug related to release 1.2.1 because we have a fourth column here for some sort of food. But 57 plus 38 plus 5, that is 100%. And I can tell you that I fast forwarded through about nine months of time and I fed these guys all three of these food sources and their health was 100% the whole time, not an issue whatsoever. So I believe that this fourth column is an error and will likely be fixed with an update. In addition, we have cleanliness, fitness, and daily riding. In order to maximize your profitability for your horses, you're going to need to have to ride your horses every day for approximately five minutes. Now that is five minutes of real time, not five minutes of game time. So there is no fast forwarding and being able to do this quickly. Once you ride your horse, you're going to walk up to the horse. You're going to hit E to enter the horse, if you will. Then you will magically be saddled on your horse and you're going to be able to walk around. WASD is how you're going to walk. You hit W a couple times and you're going to start going from a casual walk to a trot, to a canter, to a gallop. And then you can hit space bar to jump. And you can hit S to slow back down. And it's going to take you back down through the various steps. And then A and D is going to be to turn. Now you may see up in the upper left corner, your F1 menu. It says we have 42%, now 43% of our daily riding is complete. There are several different ways to address this. Console players are players on a controller. Well, I've heard of folks just getting in a horse and putting a little rubber band on your thumbstick and basically just walking the horse around in a circle for five minutes. That will completely satisfy 
the needs. I've also heard of folks just getting in the horse and walking in a direction. I tell you're at approximately 50 to 53 percent, turning around and walking back in the other direction to the animal pen. And by the time you get back to the animal pen, you're going to be at 100 percent. So you don't have to run them. It's literally just five minutes of walking. Five minutes of riding the horse will get them all of their daily riding requirements. If you have 10 horses, well, you're expected to ride each horse for five minutes per day. That's 50 minutes of real time per game day to get maximum output out of your horses as far as money. All your horses are going to be worth $120 day one at zero months of age. If you ride the horse, you are going to earn a little bit more money per day than if you didn't ride the horse. Now, I mentioned I fast forwarded each day riding a horse and basically checking it. And on average, horses that I did not ride increased in value approximately $102 per day. Horses I rode would increase in value $128 per day on average. That's not that big of a difference. Now, of course, if you average this over, let's say, 33 months, that is going to add up a little bit. But it's still, if my math is anywhere is remotely too correct, only going to make these horses worth about $4,500, maybe $5,000-ish by the time you get 33, 36 months into, into owning them. Remember, you bought them for $500. And if they're worth $5,000 after three years of riding them each day, five minutes, yeah, I don't think they're worth it. I think there's a lot easier other ways to make $4,500 than to ride horses five minutes a day. So really, horses, in my opinion, FS25, are kind of a labor of love. Either love horses or you stay away from them because they're too much effort. Now, once you've ridden a horse, well, they're kind of dirty. These guys get dirty a lot. You're going to need to brush them. And you're going to come back here to the shop. And you're going to come down here to your hand tools. And you're going to go to category of animals. And you're going to buy a horse brush for $55. That's just eating more into your profits. And with a hand tool, we're going to push one. And it's going to be able to cycle us through our hand tools. We're going to get our brush out. We're going to walk up to our dirty horse. You're going to see the little circle icon is going to turn into a brush icon. And we're going to start scrubbing our horse. And now down in the lower right, you're going to see a cleanliness percentage. And we're getting that up to 100%. And once that's up to 100%, we can stop riding a horse. Put our brush away. If we have a tool shed, I do have another video on basically tool sheds. Then... Uh, we can put our brush in our tool shed and now he's good to go. We don't have to ride him for another day. If we take a look here at our horse pasture, you see our horse right here. It's 100% clean and we've satisfied its daily requirement. And as a result, its fitness will go up tomorrow. It takes four days of riding your horse repeatedly once per day in order to get your fitness to 100%. Now let's talk a little bit about a little bit more about feeding our horses. As I mentioned, horses are going to require hay, oat, or sorghum, and a root crop. Be that potatoes, no, sorry, be that carrots, parsnips, or red beets. Now early on in the game, you can buy hay bales, you can buy horse oats in pallet bag or big bag format. Again, we're going to come here to the shop. We're going to come to objects and we can come to big bags. And from here we can buy a big bag of oat. Or we can go to our animals category under food. And here we have a big bag of oat or a pallet bag of oat. $1,400 for a thousand liters regardless of the format. 
Now, of course, you don't have to buy your oats. If you grow oats, then you can use those as well. Now, you can also buy bales. We're going to come down here to objects, bales. We can buy square hay bales, round hay bales, and you can buy square and round straw bales. We haven't talked about what we're going to keep our horses in. Well, let's go ahead and go into build mode. So control P on PC. We're going to cycle here to our animals and we're going to cycle over to horses. We have five options available to us. We have the horse pasture. It is going to be able to hold 11 horses in its standard configuration and cost $55,000. We have a small horse barn that is located right here. It is going to cost $25,000 and it's going to hold nine horses in its standard configuration. For $110,000, we can upgrade to this larger horse barn. It's going to hold 13 horses and it's going to cost $110,000. We have a small horse barn from FS22 right here. It's going to hold 16 horses and it's going to cost $118,500 and hold 16 horses in its standard <laughs> configuration. Or we could go with the large horse barn, and the large horse barn will once again hold 16 horses, and for its standard configuration, will cost $125,000. Now, I've been saying standard configuration because horses are an animal that will have dynamic pasture support. If you don't know what dynamic pasture is, basically when you place a horse barn You'll be asked, do you want to customize the fence? You can say yes. And from this point, you can basically draw your fence out like this. And then when you're done, run it back to your barn. You know you're doing a good job when it auto snaps to the building. If it doesn't auto snap to the building, then you want to try to redo the last section. Once you do that, it says, do you want to plant meadow grass? Yes, I do. And now we've got this large pasture, right? But can we put more than 16 horses? In Farm Sim 22, 16 was the max amount of horses that we could put in any one pasture or barn. How about FS25? Let's see. Uh, 16. Still in it. So the only real reason to make this thing any bigger would be to um, make it bigger. Right now, I just had a thought. I just had a thought. Is this supposed to be meadow grass? Right? Is this supposed to be meadow grass? But horses don't eat grass. They require hay. I don't know. Like I said, I feel that's a bug. I feel it's going to get fixed whenever the bug, the hatch for one point two point one comes out. If you're watching this video after the game has been updated to whatever, then that fourth column may not be there. Or maybe there will now be a language entry there telling us what this is for. I've put a bug report in. Again, this is what happens. Or this is what we see on version 1.2.1. If the game is newer than that for you, then maybe it's going to be listed there. Something else to note is straw is listed for this particular pin. In fact, straw is listed for just two of these pins. Both them, of them are going to be the Horman branded buildings, or the ones from FS22. are going to show that they will accept straw. The other two horse barns, while they don't show that they accept straw, they will accept straw, but they don't seem to actually consume it. So in my testing, I put straw into this pasture and straw will show up here within each of these little stalls. Uh, but straw was never consumed. And I put a manure heap over here, but the manure was also never spawning. So I don't know if that's a bug with 1.2.1 or if that's intended. As far as feeding your hay or your pallets of oats, well, you're going to want a front loader. Here I have for this video a Schaefer front loader, but you could use 
a telehandler or a skid steer as well. And we're going to find that here under our loaders category of our shop. We have some self-propelled wheel loaders. We have a telehandler or we have a skid steer or with your tractor. If you have a corresponding tractor with front loader mount arms, then you could put a front loader arm on it and then make use of these front loader tools. The tools that you're going to need are going to be a bale spike and a pallet fork. If you're going to be feeding bales and the pallet of oats, if you're going to be feeding the big bag of oats, then you're also going to want a big bag lifter, which we will demonstrate here in a moment. Now here I have 9,000 liters worth of hay. I'm going to go ahead and put it into this barn just to demonstrate feeding. We can feed bales into the horses. And once we've done that, we can come over here and we can see our bale is now gone. And we have 9,000 worth of hay. You can also feed your hay in loose format, either via a trailer or some sort of forage wagon. I think I'll demonstrate the big bag lifter. Again, we come here under the shop, under front loader tools, and we can find the big bag lifter either in single or dual. You're gonna do two big bags. You're gonna want something with a lot of rear end weight because these bags do have a lot of weight. We're gonna come up here, we're gonna hit Q to connect our bag and we can raise it up. And I really like, and I've mentioned it before, I really like the bag physics, how things just kind of wobble around and everything. We can take this over here to our horses. And again, just kind of present it. And there you go. Now if we come back here and check our animal screen, you can see that we have our 9,000 liters of hay. We have our 1,000 liters of base food. That's going to either be oat or sorghum is your base food. And then you can feed your root crops, which again is going to either be carrots parsnips or red beets. I'm going to use a trailer for that. So I have 2,000 liters worth of carrots here. And we're going to dump it here in the trough. And you'll see our root crops going up here as a result. Now I've mentioned in another video with respect to cows, animals that have multiple food sources, in this case, base food being oats and sorghum, hay and root crops. Be very careful about overfeeding any one of these particular categories. So we have our total capacity. Okay, we can see we're probably maybe at 60% total capacity here. If total capacity is all the way up here max, you will not be able to add any other food source. So if you fill up this total capacity with base food, you're not gonna be able to add hay or any root crops until the horses have eaten down this base food some amount. As a result, would have eaten down the total capacity to free up some capacity. I'm not a big fan of this. And it was like this in FS22. And I was pretty confident that that was a bug. So I resubmitted it very early on as a bug. Uh, it never got changed. So I guess one must admit or must assume that it was an intended feature. I will say feature because I don't agree with it. I still don't agree with it because, well, if you're not paying attention, you can really mess things up by overfeeding and there's no way to take excess stuff out of here, right? So again, be very careful and make sure you don't overfeed any one food source, which would then possibly present you from providing other food sources, which would then potentially negatively impact if you couldn't do that, 
the overall health of your animals. So at this point, we have fed all of the required food for these horses. We have ridden one of these horses, and we're going to go ahead and sleep overnight. Now remember I mentioned, in my testing, on average, horses we didn't ride increased by 102 per day, and horses we did ride increased by 128 per day. On average, let's go ahead and fast forward to tomorrow and see what's up. All right, good morning. Let's go ahead and check our information screen. And well, that was kind of disproven already. But again, I was saying on average, I started keeping tabulation of this several months into my fast forwarding test. So what we've learned here is in the first month, going from month zero to month one, our unridden horses have increased in price by $138. Our ridden horse increased by approximately $207. Okay? But again, this trend won't continue. After four or five months, I was able to routinely, month after month after month, calculate out that I was seeing a $128 increase for ridden horses, $102 increase for unridden horses. Back to our ridden horse here, Willow. We now have some good health. We have cleanliness is down a little bit. Fitness is up by 25%. Our daily riding is back to 0%. So we need to basically get on this horse and, well, get to riding again. Come on, let's get up. Come on, buddy. We got places to go, people to see. So while we are riding this horse, let's kind of talk a little bit about other things which make horses rather unique. As you can see, clearly, we have to interact with these horses on a regular basis to get the most out of them. It's pretty much the only animal in farm sim that we have to actually interact with the horse or interact with. All the other animals, for the most part, we just make sure that they're fed, make sure they have straw, Make sure that everything's good to go with respect to their pen. And that's it. We're good to go. Collect their outputs every so often. Make sure that when they reproduce, there's enough capacity for their young. That's all we have to do. Horses, though, well, they require a little bit of special treatment. But also to that end, we have the ability to name our horses. Come back to here. You can see all these horses have names. Miracle, Dakota, Prickles, Dolly, Urko, Leonardo, Urko again. And then we have, um, I don't remember the name of this one. I'm terrible with names of everything. At any rate, back to this. If we don't like the word Miracle, we can come down here, we can rename our horse. We can name it, rename it from Miracle to, oh... We can name it Nutcracker. And once we do that, there we go. It's now named Nutcracker. So it's the only animal that we can also name in game. I think that's just about it, guys. I mean, really, I'm not going to be fast forwarding 33 months to go from juvenile, newborn, to fully grown adult and had just done an offspring. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fast forward 22 months and see what's the max value of a ridden horse every month for 22 months straight. If you want to do that, that's fine. Calculating out the value, I come to about $4,500. If after the first few months, our monetary increase really stabilizes at 128. Maybe it changes at some other point in the future. I don't know. But if we just factor in $128 increase after the first few months for the rest of the life period of this horse, it's only going to be around $4,500, maybe max $5,000. Having to ride a horse for five minutes each day, 
for three months or five for three years really feels like it's not worth it unless you just absolutely love horses i'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to horses in farm sim 25 did you use them in farm sim 22 or are you going to keep them in farm sim 25 or not and until next time happy farming